Okay, so uh, let's start the last section of this um, section, the two uh, last talks, right? Uh, the first talk is by Mauricio Poletti from uh, UFC, the University, Federal University of Sierra. And uh, he did a PhD. I think he is one of maybe the youngest speaker of this uh, section. So maybe I'm mistaken, I'm not sure. He did a PhD at IMPA with Marcelo Viana in two, and finished in 2016, I think. And uh, he did a postdoc in University, University Paris North. And already has seven publications uh, in very nice uh, journals. So this time, Mauricio is going to talk about partial hyperbolic, partially hyperbolic maps with zero central Lyapunov exponents. Mauricio, please. Thanks, Daniel. Um, thanks to the organizer for the invitation. So I will talk about uh, this joint work with Sylvain Crovisia. And it's about partially hyperbolic maps with zero central Lyapunov exponent. So let me start explaining what is the goal of our work. The goal of our work is to relate two objects that are very used, very important in dynamics. These are the invariant foliations and the invariant measures. So let me start saying what I mean by these objects. By invariant foliations, I will work with we will work with partially hyperbolic diffeos of this type. So with uh, with three bundles, uh, unstable, stable, and a center bundle that is dominated by the unstable and stable bundle. So it's known that the unstable and the stable bundle are integrable. So there is this invariant foliations tangent to these bundles. It's not always true that the center bundle is integrable, but we say that F is dynamically coherent if it actually exists about a center stable and a center unstable bundle tangent to the center stable and the center unstable distribution. So we, if, is, if the system is dynamically coherent, we can define the center bundle as the, the center foliation as the intersection of these two bundles, these two foliations. So, and this is not always true, but it is true in very interesting examples of the dynamical system, the partially hyperbolic difference. So, uh, the other object are the invariant measures. By this, I mean measures that are invariant by the dynamics. And how do we relate, relate these two objects? So, what we do is to disintegrate. So, let, so here F is our foliation. And we take sigma uh, transverse section to our foliation. So locally, we can write our foliation as a product foliation, right? A sigma and a product of disks of F. So using this product structure here, we can uh, disintegrate our measure using Rockley disintegration theorem. We can disintegrate the measure on this B, this box as an integral of measures along the, these disks. So this mu f are measures concentrated here on this disk and it varies with each of these plates of the foliation. So we are going to analyze these measures mu f. So this is a relation between the, uh, the measures and the foliation. So the question is what information can we have about our dynamics we, we, uh, if we know some information about these measures and vice versa. So let me start mention some result. It's about, this is from Avi, Labian and Wilkinson. So they start with a geodesic flow on a negative curvature surface. So they take the, the flow on the tangent space, the unitary tangent space, and they take the time one map of this, of this flow. So this is a partially hyperbolic diffeo, it's volume preserving. Then they prove the following dichotomy, that there exists a neighborhood inside the volume preserving diffeos, such that the disintegration of the volume, or it is atomic on the center, so this mu c is the measure, the disintegration of the measure on the center foliation, or is atomic, or f again is the time one map of an anosoflow. 
So they start with a flow. So this is, you have like the flow lines here. The time one map is just to advance one unit of time on this, on each of these lines. So these are partially hyperbolic diffeo. The center variation is given by the flow lines. Then they perturb, so this is phi one, and you have some F that is also partially hyperbolic, has a dynamically coherent. And this F is again a flow. This is a very rigid property. If and only if the disintegration is not atomic. So if, if not the disintegration is atomic, if or the disintegration is atomic, or it is again the time of move upload. And this is the case that the measure is absolutely continuous with level. So let me state another result that has this type of flavor is the result of Hertz, Hertz, Tassivi, and Ures. So they start with, a, so they work with a partially hyperbolic diffeo on dimension three with a one dimensional compact center leaf. So this is like the system is like a, mainly like a skew product. So you have the, here the center leaves, and they analyze the uh, measure of maximal entropy. And they have this hypothesis of accessibility. I will explain because this will be all useful later. So accessibility means that any pair of points on our manifold can be joined by some path of stable and unstable uh, leaves. So they prove that the measure of maximal entropy of these maps you have also a dichotomy. Either there exists a unique measure of maximal entropy that has zero centrally upon an exponent, or you have finite many measure of maximal entropy, some of them with positive and some of them with negative exponent. The first case is when the measure is on the center is Lebesgue, and the second case is when the measure on the center is atomic. So you can see how the, the behavior of the center of the measure on the center foliation gives information about the, the dynamics. So a fair result on this line that I want to mention is a, this is a, a joint work with uh, Jerome Bussi, Silvan Grovisier, and Alita Civi. So we start with a transitive anus of flow on dimension three that is not a suspension. Then there exists a C1 neighborhood of this map. Here, we do not, don't ask this to be volume preserving. So we don't need this to be volume preserving. And uh, this neighborhood is, the map is not need to be volume preserving. And we prove a dichotomy about measure of maximal entropy. Either there exists a unique one, and the map is a, topolo is, uh, a topological and also flow, or you have exactly two measures of maximal entropy, one with positive center exponent and one with negative center exponent. So let me just give like a picture. So again, we start with the time one map of a flow, and also flow. You perturb it, and you have some map here, F. So the measure of maximum entropy has only two possibilities. Or you have a unique measure of maximal entropy, and phi is the time one map of a flow. Or there are exactly two measures of maximal entropy. This is the atomic case, one with positive center exponent and one with negative exponent. These are called twin measures. So uh, what is the idea behind all these results? And this is the, what I want to talk about. Is The idea is to analyze the Lyapunov exponents of our, of our diff. So, I think everybody knows that Lyapunov exponent gives the exponential growth of the derivative along the orbit. So uh, the main tool that, that they are used in this result is what is called the invariance principle. So the invariance principle goes back to the works of uh, Fustenberg, Guillet Drapier, and I state a version that was proved by Avila and Viana for a smooth case. So they prove something a little bit more general for smooth co-cycle, but I will state the version that is used for partially hyperbolic uh, dynamics. That is that, so if F is a partially hyperbolic skew product, then if the exponents on the center direction are all smaller or equal than zero, 
for almost every point, uh, the center disintegration is invariant under U holonomous. So what do I mean by this? So our system is a skew product, partial hyperbolic skew product. So here we have a base dynamic that is uh, hyperbolic, like an also. And we have some compact center leaves. So if we have two compact leaves on the same, two center leaves on the same center unstable manifold, we can go from one point to the to, to one center leaf to the other to the other center leaf following the the U foliation, the unstable fol the unstable leaf. So this defines this defines a map from this leaf here to the leaf here, to the leaf of the foliation here. Then what they prove is that. If the exponents are smaller than the zero in the center direction, the, measure, the disintegration of the measure here goes to the measure of the, the disintegration of the measure here by the holonomy. So the push forward the measure by this unstable holonomy gives the measure on the other leaf. Of course, the disintegration is defined almost everywhere. All these objects are measurable. So the inter more interesting thing is this corollary that says that if you have zero center exponents or all the exponents are zero, so we have a symmetry, we have U and S invariant, then, and you have this property that the measure uh, projects to a measure with product structure, I was explaining what, what this means, then actually this integration can be extended continuously to the support. So you go from a disintegration that is defined almost everywhere and is measurable to something that is continuous and defined on the whole support of the mesh. So what do I mean by this product structure? So for these systems are like skew product. Then we can project our all our system to the to this part that is hyperbolic. So we can do this for the measure. Then as it is hyperbolic. Locally, you have a product structure on stable and unstable directions. So this means that locally, the measure is absolutely continuous with a measure that is a product. So this is what is called, this is a product structure that they need here. So this is, gives a lot, of, of, a lot of rigidity for the case of zero exponent. You have a direction that is continuous and defined on the whole support. This is the main tool used on this, on the first result, two result that I mentioned. So for our for the series so that this is joint work that I mentioned, you need something more. So let me explain what I mean by this. So in their proof of the invariance principle, the two things that are very important is that the center foliation is compact and that it forms a fiber bundle, especially that it, that the that the center foliation forms a fiber bundle. This is a very important hypothesis. On their proof, so we try to generalize. So we gen in a with Silvan we generalize this pro this invariance principle to a more general class of partial hyperbolic dynamical system that we call quasi isometric on the center. What do I mean by this? That there exists some constants such that for every n, these constants are independent of n. If you take any pair of points x and y on the same center manifold, they do not uh, go too far apart and to, and they don't go too much together at some large scale. So this is like some uh, isometric property, but this Q means that this only, that this is true at some large scale. Another way to see this property more geometrically is to do this. So we start, so quasi isometric is equivalent to the existence of some three uh, constants, some radius, some, some R, R1 and R2, with the following property that if we start with a ball, so this is a center manifold, and with a ball of radius r, then the image of this ball can be deformed, but it always contains 
a smaller ball of radius R1 and a bigger ball of radius R2. And these are uniform on all the iterates of the map. So this is another way, a geometrical way to see this quasi isometric. Of course, this R does not need to be very, very small. So it's some large scale, this is true. Okay, what systems are have this property? For example, if the center leaves are compact, this is true. And also uh, like perturbation of the time one map of a flow, a system that has some center fixing property in one dimensional system one dimensional uh, center leaf and its center fixing normally has this kind of property. So what we prove is some invariance principle for this kind of map. So we start with a C2 partially hyperbolic quasi isometric on the center. If the exponents are smaller or equal than zero, then the center disintegration is invariant by U alone. So here, what do I mean by environmental autonomies? So if we have a center unstable uh, disk, we can write this as a, as a square. We have two center leaves here. The autonomy from here to here go by the, by the unstable leaves, takes them the, this disintegration here to the disintegration here. Okay, so uh, so this is our our result, and this is what is used in the or the result that I mentioned. So let me explain uh, the kind of corollary that we get for measures that have some product structure. So if our measure mu has a product structure, now we we don't have a quotient dynamics because we don't assume that this is from a fiber bounded. So we have a measure that is like this. So we have like a CU. So we can write our system as a product of CU and S. Then if the locally the measure can be written absolutely continuous with a product measure of this kind of type, mu CU, mu S, and the center exponent are zero, we can also extend continuously the disintegration of the support. So the disintegration is continuous and can be extended to the full support of the of the mesh. Okay, so let me now give the idea of how do we prove uh, this result about measure maximal entropy using this uh, theorem, this new invariance principle that we prove. So, uh, so this is the, the theorem that I mentioned. We start with the transitive annus of flow. There's no suspension. And we want to find a neighborhood of the time one map with this dichotomy on the measure maximal entry. So we start with a map close to, to the time one map. And we use a, a result of uh, Jerome, uh, Ali, and, and Todd Fisher that they prove, they also prove a dichotomy that they prove that either you are in the second case, so we, or you have exactly two measures of maximal entropy, one with positive and one negative exponent, or all the measures of maximal entropy have zero exponent. So using this result, we only have to focus now on this to prove that actually this case, you have a unique measure of maximal entropy. And in this case, only happen when the F is, is like a flow. But we are going to use more than more about the, the work that they actually prove that if the measure of maximal entropy has center exponents more than or equal than zero, then the measure of is given by, so the unstable disintegration of the measure is given by a Margulis family. So I will not define what is a Margulis family of measures, but I would just state the properties that will be use, useful for us. So this means the, the Margulis family has these two properties that the measure is CS quasi invariant and is fully supported. So what do I mean by CS quasi invariant? So the measures are now, this family of measure is this integration along the unstable leaves. Then we can go from one unstable leaf close to the other one by CS holonomies. Then you can define a CS holonomy 
from, from one leaf to the other one. Then this map is absolutely continuous with respect to the measure here, to the measure here. So this takes measure of uh, any measure, any set of zero measure to a set of zero measure here and the inverse also. So that's the same, but this is what I mean by CS quasi invariant. It's not exactly invariant, it's only quasi invariant. So these two properties allows us to have the following. So we have, we're focusing on the zero case exponent and this quasi invariance gives us that the measure has a product structure of these types, mu u and mu cs. So then we can apply our invariance principle to this case. So how do we, uh, how do, we do this? So we, we need to prove, we're going to prove that the measure is, in this case, is the Lebesgue measure along the center, or absolutely continuous with Lebesgue. So we start with some center bond, some center leaf here. We have two points on the same center here, X and Y. And as this is the time, we are close to a time of a flow that is not a suspension and it's transitive, we are accessible. So we can go from X to Y by a path of stable and unstable leaves. Then we can do the following. We can define from, from a neighborhood of X to a neighborhood of Y, a map that is, we go by a stable allonomy, then unstable, stable, unstable, and go back there. So this composition of this, all these maps, we call this map H. So H will go from a neighborhood of X to a neighborhood of Y. Then by our invariance principle, we can we know that we can apply this to to the all the all the measures here because the we have full support product structure. We have that the center measure of a ball centered on centered on X of radius delta is equal to the measure of H of the, map, of the image of this ball here. And this is, observe that this is centered on Y. Also, by accessibility, we can go from X to Y by an, a finite number of, of legs and a finite size of this, this path. Then we can we know that the stable and unstable anomalies are absolutely continuous. So we can find absolutely continuous with the Lebesgue measure. So for the Lebesgue measure, we also have the measure the Lebesgue measure on the center. We also have a relation here, like this. Yeah, because this k depends on the Jacobian of this of this allonym. So dividing these two relation and making delta converge to zero, we will have that the derivative, the Radon derivative of mu c with respect to Lebesgue on x is smaller or equal than some constant the Radon de derivative. And changing the roles of x and y, we also have the bound below. So the these radon derivatives are uh, bounded from above and below. Then the measure are uh, as one absolutely continuous with respect to, to the other one with uh, bounded densities. So. Uh, with this, we conclude that the measure is absolutely continuous with Lebesgue, and that is a, a, a procedure that was also done in Avila, Viana, and Wilkinson. From this, to recover a flow. Once do you know that the measure on the center is is absolutely continuous with Lebesgue, you can recover a, a flow, a, a topological flow. Okay, so this is the idea of the result. Then let me just give a. Uh, some words about the proof, the idea of the proof of the main result, that is this invariance principle that we prove. So uh, for the quasi-isometric on the center, 
with exponents more equal than zero, the center is integration is u invariant. So how do we prove this? Let me just give the, the main idea. I think I have 10 minutes. So uh, to prove that the measure is invariant by u allonomies, it's equivalent to the following. If we start with a center unstable uh, disk, but actually a square that you write exactly in the coordinates that this is a product of center and unstable, being u invariant is exactly the same that the measure, the mu cu measure here, is exactly equal to a measure on to a product measure mu u mu c. So exactly equal to a product measure in this coordinate. And how do we see if a measure is a product? We can do the following. If we take some strip here, let's call this P, a strip mean that this saturated by the center uh, plugs here in this square, the measure of this strip is exactly equal to the measure of this of the strip on each of these horizontals. So for each uh, x here, we take here the measure mu u of x. So this is the horizontal measure. Then this should be true almost everywhere if and only if the measure is a product. So this will be true for every strip of this kind. So we want to prove this, that we have this property. To do this in some dynamical to dynamical way, we introduce some, we use some entropies. So the entropy, so we start with now a partition P of by strips. So this means a partition like this. So we have like here, like one strip P1, P2, P3, a partition of this square by strips. Then the entropy of this partition is given by minus the log mu cu p of x the mu cu of x and the unstable entropy of this partition is the integral log of mu u x the x the mu cu of x Applying some Jensen inequality. We have that this is more or equal, this is bigger or equal than zero. And it's zero if and only if we have the property that we want. Mu C of P of X is equal to mu U X of P of X for mu cu almost every x. Then we will use this entropy to analyze this, uh, this product structure. So this uh, idea is, is very similar to a proof of the variant principle that was a version of the variant principle that was proved for by Alita Sibia and Yagan Yang. Okay, so just to finish, what is the idea now? So we have this this entropy, then we need to, const to do the following. We start with some strip and some partition P of this kind. So for now, on, let's forget about the stable direction. Uh, just focus on the center and stable uh, leaves. Then we want to construct a sequence of partition one refining the other one. With the follow, with two properties. The first property is that the entropy, the transverse entropy, I don't know if I define it. Okay, so the, this difference we call transverse entropy of P. So we call this the transverse entropy of P. So we want that the transverse entropy of Pn is bigger or equal that n times uh, some constant here, uniform constant, 
the transverse entropy of the original partition P. And that the lean soup of one over N, the transverse entropy of Pn, is smaller or equal than the entropy of F minus the unstable entropy of F. Then, as you can see, if we, we are the map is C2, so if we have exponents on the centers more or equal than zero, this will be zero. So this will imply that this should be zero. Then we will conclude that the transverse entropy is zero, so the measure is like a product. So the whole problem then is to construct this kind of partition. Just to give a rough idea, so how do we prove this? So we start with some region here. Then we extend a little bit this region. And we extend our partition. And we start to iterate this region. So it will grow on the unstable direction. And the center will be uh, will be controlled by this quasi-isometric property. So with this, we construct, we induce a new partition on the image here. So this is P, this is like F, some Fn of P. Then we induce the partition here and we come to Pn, we, uh, we take the, the, the inverse of this. So then we push the this partition back to the original one, right to the to the to this square by the dynamic step by F minus M. So we induce the the partition of the image using this original partition that we have. So here is where the the so this is the very technical this this construction. Just to give the this is just to give the idea, and this is the part where this uh, quasi isometric property appears. So, well, I think I will stop here. And so, thanks for the attention. Thank you, Mauricio. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, so maybe uh, can I say something, ask something, Mauricio? Mm -hmm. uh, so you use this quasi-isometric uh, property. What happens if you know, for instance, that the, the growth on the center is kind of polynomial or some parabolic dynamics on the center? And, uh, and is it possible to, to extend uh, these, these, these initial rectangles very larger and to... to to play with, between this game of exponential and polynomial, is, is mm -hmm. it? I, actually, I don't know. It, mm. So it is, yeah, our construction really needs to, to have some fixed region. If it grows too much, it's like, so this first property of that is like, you always see the part, the, the original uh, entropy, the original entropy of P by this. If you start to grow too much, it's like this constant C will be, very very small mm -hmm. and you will have you will start to see this but in a very small scale so i don't know if maybe maybe when you grow in the center you can actually see that you come back with the center to this region and try to play something like this but the the, the our idea of this does not work very well in that case okay Thank any you. question So I have one about this quasi-isometry thing because this is something that uh, well appears like in hyperbolic dyna uh, hyperbolic uh, geometry, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this quasi-isometry thing, but uh, I don't think this is a very robust. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a problem actually. So this this property is not very robust in in many cases. Uh, but in the, there are cases where it's robust and there are some settings in, where in one dimension uh, for example for the time one map of a 
of a flow, if you perturb it, you still have this property. I see. Because you can do some, you have that the, uh, this is, what do you, call it? you can do this kind of conjugate by the centers and you also have center fixing. And the main idea is that this, if you have a center fixing dynamics that you like for, from X to F of X by a, some, some length, then this can give this, this kind of radius that you, you control, like the maximum mm -hmm. length of, from X of, from, of to FX and the minimum length, and you can play with this. And this is stable by, by, by perturbations. I see. So but do you have some uh, example in mind when you, you prove this theorem? There's some class of examples in mind where you can apply this example, uh, this theorem, I'm sorry, this dichotomy. Yeah, no, no. So the dichotomy is for for the perturbation of time one map, right? So I see. Yeah, so for time one close to the time one map of a uh, of a flow, this is this this works. I see. And the, both the is, uh, so the, 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 case, the, sorry. Yeah. So the, the thing is in in higher that center dimension that our theorem works in in any dimension of the center, but mm -hmm. we don't have a, like. A, robust examples that has this property in higher center dimension. Maybe some artificial thing like if you work with a, I don't know, like a like a time a perturbation of time one map for flow and you have a cost cycle over there or a skew product over there, you have some mix of one dimensional thing and some uh, compact and, and so com compact parts, something like this. Can and there is any uh, reason to believe that one of these options are more, um, Typical the other one. Uh, in this uh, dichotomy? Yes. Yeah, actually the, the, the second one is, is generic. I see. Be okay. Because by perturbation, you can always construct a like a hyperbolic point. Uh, so you, can, you have some so close center leaf and you can perturb it to have a, a hyperbolic point. Then you will also you will have the second option. So being at the time one map of a flow is a very difficult property. So actually, the, I didn't mention that yet, but the generic the, case. Do, the so, so the other case maybe is some like infinite codimension situation or? Probably, uh, yeah, probably. Mm. Yeah, I don't know something about probably, yeah. So maybe you expect a stronger structure in the first case. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. More rigid structure in the first yeah. case. Yeah, yeah. I see. Thank you. Are there any other question? If not, let's thank Maurice again.